Like this time, we gotta go and get started. And, uh, like I see that uh, we're gonna ask we're gonna ask someone from the audience to uh, to give us a song, and we'll ask um, Melissa Faison to lead us in prayer. <laughs> I'm glad to be a servant. I'm glad to be in your service. I'm glad to be in the service one more time. You didn't have to let me live. You didn't have to let me live. I'm glad to be in the service one more time. Good morning again to each and every one. There's a few in the ones that are on, on uh, YouTube and on the call and this morning, let us go and craft them this morning on this new year. Thank God for this new year. Dear gracious Father, we come this morning as humble as we know how. If then, O oh, Heavenly Father, we come this morning, we ask you to come into your house this morning and have your way. Mm-hmm. Then, Lord, we just ask you to bless the pastor this morning, the pastor, and then, Lord, good morning, happy new year to everyone there. Bless all. Good morning, happy new year to you too. We just ask you this morning, Lord, just to continue to bless us as we go through this new year. So we ask you to come into this year this morning, uh, come to the rest and bless this teacher this morning as she teaches the word that the saints can sell out of the word that she brings to us through this morning. Then, Lord, we want to thank you all for your worship this morning. With blood running through our name yeah. this morning to have, um, to have us to have our way up on this day. Yeah. Then, Lord, we ask you to bless the seat this morning. Bless Marisa and all. Just yeah. touch me, Lord, with that. Bring your love. Yes, sir. Let them know, Father, that you are still yes. there with us. Yes. Then with all your love, your grace this morning. Mm-hmm. We want to thank you all for all your blessings this morning. Amen. 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 Again, we want to thank um, Mother Lewis for the song and Deacon Rich for the prayer. If you are, if you turn to your book on page five, <coughs> And we'll go with the opening. Let's decide for this morning. Everyone there? Okay, this this reads that follow. If we come from the very if we come from the very first book of Psalms, excuse me. Okay. It says, Blessed is the man that walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, not stand in the way of self, not sit in the seat of common. But when his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. And he, and he shall be like a big tree planted by the river of water that bring forth his fruits in his season. The lead also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinner in the congregation of the right, righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Our lesson will be coming from John, the third chapter, verse 1 through 8. And there was a man of the Pharisee named Nicodemus, a ruler of Jews. The same, the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know, we know that there are a teacher come from God, but no man can do these miracles. That thou does, except God be with him. Jesus 
the Alpha has said unto, said unto him, Very, very, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he can not see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? And can he enter the second time into his mother womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very, very, I say unto thee, Said unto, yeah, unto thee, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not, I, I say unto thee, you must be born again. The, blame, the wind blows where it is, and they hear the sound thereof. But cannot tell whence it come and whether it go. So everyone that is born of the Spirit, thank you for the reading of the word. And at this time, we're going to turn the lesson over to our trusty book. Then I will destroy the people. 
I will destroy my people from the land um, from the land which I have given them. And he says, and this temple shall be destroyed, even though I have sanctified it for the sake. Instead, I'll make it a public display. Uh, <clears throat> he said, instead of you being famous like your man, all who pass by will shake their heads in disgust and say, what in the world happened there? But then they will be told that because they abandoned the Lord, God of their father, the God who brought them out of the land of Egypt, they worship other gods. That's why that has happened. And as we look at our lesson, you know, first of all, we look how God had a chosen place. And, and Solomon built the temple, but God chose it as his place. The spirit would be present, where his spirit would be present among the people. Now, just like God chose person for certain things, he chose the places that he would bear witness, the places that he would use to bear witness to the present, at, to his present at work in the world. Now, God, uh, God tells Solomon what it means for him, for him to have chosen the temple. He said his selection had responsibilities as well as blessings. The people would not be able to come to worship in the temple and expect the blessings of God if they are not following the will of God. He says, now, now the present, his presence, the presence of the people in the presence of the temple, it, it would not remove the possibility of judgment if people do not worship God with the whole heart and treat others the way God expects. Now where he said, ain't no use of coming in the temple praying and expecting to get your blessing and you know you're not doing people right. He said, the blessing of God relates to the obligation of the people of God. The temple is the place that God has chosen in community where the people may come to turn to him and he will turn to the people. We know that <laughs> And then God promised a position. He told of Solomon, as long as they are doing what they're supposed to be doing, like his father David. And he promised David that somebody from his line would always sit on the throne. And he's, he's telling Solomon that again. He said, he promised that someone from his family would always sit on the throne of Israel. And see, this was told again to Solomon. And uh, the covenant comes with certain conditions. And those conditions are that Solomon would follow David's example of trusting God and keeping the law of God. Solomon had it made because he got off to a good start anyway. And, but the Lord has told him now, you know, I got you. I'm going to be with you. I, I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to make sure everything goes fine. But you have got to live in a way that you will serve me. And then you've got to teach the people, the people so they'll follow, and they will be following you, but they will be doing what I said. So the responsibility starts with you, and then everybody is going to be responsible for a little share of this. Because mm -hmm. everybody's going to share the blessing, so everybody's going to be responsible for a little share. Mm -hmm. And, and, and he said, you see, the king can't just uh, do what he wants to. You know, here, nowadays, if a politician got enough power, he does what he wants to. Mm -hmm. But the king, in that day, he told us that now the king does not have absolute power to do what he wants to do if he wants to remain on the throne. I said, now the king has a responsibility to God to follow God and lead the people in ways that allow them to follow God's will. Mm -hmm. And he said, and Solomon's faithfulness can, you know, can serve as a model king for the nation. And we, as we look at this, and we know that, we know that uh, uh, what David, even some of the things he did, but he was 
a man after God's own heart. And God loved him, trusted him, but he didn't let him build the temple. Don't know why, but he didn't let him build the temple. But he let his son Solomon build it. But then he told Solomon, said, now you need to be like your father. Your father trusted me. He did well, and I have blessed him. I can do the same thing for you. But now you've got a big responsibility. You got to live it. And then you got to treat the people so they can live it. Uh, teach the people. Let them lead by example. Let the people see you doing it. And then they will know how to do it. And then um, God says, uh, You can avoid an unnecessary penalty if you do what I say. And he warned Solomon about what could happen to a nation that turned away from him. He said, I re first I removed from the land. And the land went, meant so much to the people. And to take the land away. And these people had been in bondage once before. And the very thought that they might go back in bondage, it, you know, it shook them up and they lost their hope. It, it could cause them to lose hope. See, and then another thing he said, my prayer will leave the temple. You know, Israel would become a public, a public shame. And, and as others ask why God treated Israel like this. We don't, we don't always know what God, how God is going to go to pour out his blessing or pour out his, his judgment or his, his penalty. But there's one thing we do know. If God, if we're not following God's instruction, if we're not doing what the Lord tells us to do, then we can kind of expect some stuff. Because mm -hmm. we know, we know better. Mm -hmm. And most of all of us now got our Bibles, we can read. We know a lot more than our ancestors did. Mm -hmm. They, some of them didn't even have Bibles. And then the ones that had probably couldn't read. Right. But they knew how to get in touch with God. Mm -hmm. But do we know how to get in touch with God like they did? And um, you see, the nation, it's a, no nation can hide behind religion while mistreating others. And, and, and we don't always know how God will respond to the sins of the nation, but we know, and we know he's patient, but we know in his time, he will respond. And the question always for the nation is not what is in their interest, but what is in the interest of God and how God wants to use the nation to accomplish his will. Mm -hmm. Now, if the nation will put God's interest over their own interest, then they can avoid the penalty of turning away from sin. You see, if the king, if the king does not lead as he should be, the people will get scattered, they'll falter, they'll, you know, next thing you know, they'll be completely turned away from God. Just like sometimes you say, like I was say this morning, I don't think I'll go. Sometimes we say, we ain't going to church today, and we'll go next Sunday. Then the next Sunday, something comes up, you don't go that Sunday. And after a while, you get to the point, it doesn't bother you if you don't go. And, you, and next thing you know, you're not going at all. Right. Then when someone sees you, say, "Well, you know, I hadn't seen that church lately." Oh, I'm coming! I'm coming! I, I, I'm coming! I just, I, I just hadn't got there. I'm coming. So I'm saying, if this, if they see Solomon doing this way, then they, you know, they'll start to drifting away. And he said, that, and God told Solomon, said, "Now you are the you the man, and if you don't do like I tell you, I'm going to wipe Israel right off the map." Now, these are the things that you need to know, because if you're not careful, you can start slipping, and next thing you know, you're back to some ways like some of the other kings we had. <coughs> he said, if you desire to be king, then you want to have it. When they had kings, the kings sat on the throne until they died. But he said, that the ones that did what God told them to do, <coughs> they had a place. They didn't have to worry about it. And if Solomon died, then they had someone that's in the line of David that could take over. He told him, said, as long as you live right, I'm going to have somebody from your line 
to be king. And you don't, you don't have to worry about it. As long as you do what I told you, you're going to flourish. You're going to be blessed. You're going to live good. But if you turn away from me, you know, mm -hmm. it's going to be it's going to be rough. If you turn away from me, then you cause others to turn away from me. There's a big penalty to be paid. Mm -hmm. And he says to, um, and, and the, you know, he said, he, he told him, he said, now, you, you can look at this. He said, now, you can avoid this unnecessary penalty. And he tells us the same thing today. We can avoid some unnecessary problems and penalty if only we don't turn away from God. And, and see, uh, the greed, see, the greed of some have put, just like our nation, some of the greed of some of the people have put our natural resources and, and, and certain wildlife and put it at risk. And, and you know, we have global warming issues, increasing violence in our schools and our communities. You know, the state and the local official had banned uh, teaching the nation history on race. And they've also made it harder for certain people to vote. Mm -hmm. Each passing year, we witness more violent storms and more damaging wildfires. Mm -hmm. The global pandemic, it exposed a lot of things, showed the difference in people who get care and people who don't get care. And there's been a lot of things going on. <laughs> so as we look at what's going on today, that ought to tell us <laughs> a lot of things. And we know, we look at our leaders today, we don't seem to have a Solomon. We don't seem to have a David. But we got who we got. But we have things we have to do in our city, our own city. We are responsible for some things. You see, God can make the promise. He made the promise to us. We can accept it uh, or we can break the promise by the way we do. <coughs> He's just not going to continue to, you know, we're just not going to stay on top and continue doing what we're doing. We're going to pay the penalty. And unfortunately, the, the, those who are not in leadership, they got to pay just like the leaders have. Mm -hmm. and, and it's very sad. But, you know, and, and God promised, gave to Solomon, you know, it, it can be broken by humans who are part of the problem, part of the couple. And, you know, we have a role in ensuring that God promises come to pass. God said if we do what he tells us, he's going to give us the things that he promised. His promises will be fine. But if we don't, what he's saying here, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm trying to get you to avoid you, avoid you from having pay a penalty. You can avoid this penalty, unnecessary penalty, by following my word. If you don't follow my word, then this is what's going to happen. And you know, it's, it's kind of like it's kind of like a contract or a lease. You know, they, in the big letters up there, they got whatever. But then down under there, and this is the anything, something you buy to, they got the little small writing that you got to strain to try to find out what that's saying. But that is where a lot of the uh, stuff is in there. And you see, it's kind of like that saying, the big print give it and the little print take it away. <laughs> because if you don't read that little print down there, you might find yourself, um, you say, well, that's not what you told them. When you go back and talk to them, they say, did you read the contract? Look down the bottom of it. And they got it so small that even people with good eyes have a hard time trying to see it. You got to see it, you got to read it, and then you got to try to understand it. So, you know, with this, uh, with this, the, the blessing, the covenant, that was like the big print. God said, look what I'm giving you. Look what I'm giving you. But then that small print down is said, now, but, and if, if you do what I tell you, if you obey my commands, then you can do, you can have these blessings. 
So it's kind of like the, the, the big print and the little print. And you see, and we are, that, there are many reasons that a nation need a movement of repentance and turning to God. And you know, when we have a, we have a national day of prayer, but do we have a national day of repentance? Do we repent before the day comes so that when the national day of prayer, you know, we can get in there and we can we, we can make a difference? But all of the prayer in the world is good. The prayer is good, but if there's no repentance, it really ain't going very far. That's right. There's got to be some repentance. So we have a national day of prayer. We need a national day of repentance. Mm -hmm. Each one of us need our own personal day. And then when the national day comes, we will be ready. We will have power and we will be able to do, you know, make a difference. Mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, we, we look at people when they come on TV, the politician, they make up. You know, they make that little speech and all, then they say, then in the end, they say, God bless you and God bless America. Well, just saying God bless America ain't enough. Mm -hmm. No, that won't cut. We need something different. We, we need some strong stuff. We need some fire, not just a little smoke. God bless America. We, we, we thank you for that, but what we need, we need a day of repentance so that we don't pay the penalty. Just like the Israelites pray. Are there any comments at this time? Yes, ma'am. I just want to thank God for you. And I want to thank God for him giving me the knowledge and ability to be able to speak to us this Sunday lesson this morning. I just want to thank God for it. And like you said, uh, God said, wait, well, like you saying in the lesson, that people do what God he asked you to do. He will heal the land. Well, he's talking to us today. Yeah. Do as I ask you to do, and I will heal the land. And people keep talking about this code and stuff. See, we been, uh, we ain't being obedient to God. And so he going to let us get out here until he get ready to move it. So you not doing what he asked you to do. He gonna let you know who run, who got all the power, who holds the reins and everything. He he said, I am the beginning and I am the end. So you can't go around, you can't go over, you can't go on me. So we must come in at the door and do as he asked us to do. And he said, I supply your needs, not your wants, but I supply your needs. The way, the way he, well, you gonna say something? I'll go ahead on this. I like, um, in remembering it says, to seek the Lord for his provision, for his provision, for his protection, and for the presence of his spirit in our lives should be our daily task. It's not just sometimes, but it's all the time. It should be daily that we're seeking him. And we know that his promises are good. Um, we just have to do our part. Amen. Yeah. All right. And if, as each one of us do our part, and then our leaders, do, you know, we can't depend on our leaders. Look where we are today. We can't depend on our leaders. We only have to depend on ourselves and God. That's right. But God is holding our leaders responsible, though. Mm -hmm. But thank God we don't follow everything we see that we see them do. Thank God we know better. That's right. Since we know better, we know more better. That's right. See, man, we went to a church one Sunday, and the lady up there in the pool said, and this one I said to me, we've been sitting down out there and want to go again. Because she <laughs> told, she told us, if the pastor tell you to do something, you know it's wrong. You still supposed to do what, what he said do. And he don't do what he said do. And I know that's wrong. If Pastor Lewis tell me to do something, he knows wrong and I know I'm wrong. I'll be so stupid to do what he said. Come on, the pastor gonna get punished for it. 
We don't want for nothing. Not the other two. We don't want for nothing. We don't want for nothing. We have an abundance of a whole lot of things. We got more than we'll ever use on this side. And we still accumulate. So with all that, we got a lot to be grateful for. All we need to do now is just, you know, go to work. Because our needs and many of our wants are supplied. So we just don't go on to work and not have to work about it. That's right. Are they? Uh -huh. You know, I was looking at the uh, introduction to this that and the key verse that says, uh, that my people that are which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal the land. I hear you say a lot about repentance. That's what we want to do. Mm -hmm. But in the introduction, they said, Coach. Now he had really changed the way we look at life and how our life is governed, especially the number of cases of death and steady rising, manpower for unemployment and family structures, social has socialization interrupt. For a really scary. Just what are we to do and how are we to do it? I like this that it just makes it sound. What is the role of the church? And believe or miss of those things. Is there ever a time uh, you say we think, but we still share in consequence of what sin has brought even on America? Is there ever a time a uh, universal Bible is needed? That is now. Because there are, a lot, there are a lot of people still, we are blessed, but there are a lot of people that are still suffering. There are a lot of people that are going through it. Unnecessary death, and we don't have the amplitude. Mm -hmm. But the Bible is solid. The Lord tells us right the church. And the important thing, how much do we believe in our prayer? Mm -hmm. we, we pray and pray, and people don't think, I think it, it, it'd be necessary to say, how often uh, are people say that we are praying, but just how much they believe in the power of prayer? Mm -hmm. We put too much trust. And other things, we put too much trust in each other. We put too much trust in uh, 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 special program and stuff, special uh, uh, in social media. But when we talk to God and put that trust in Him, and He and, and then what the, the key verse said, "If my people, we the church, mm -hmm. and we will pray, and if we will turn from our wicked ways, mm -hmm. then we will hear from Him." But how much the church really believe in prayer? There are no verse that they said we're scared. The church folk have got very scared in them. We are almost scared to be pray. I had to <laughs> I feel that if the church people are praying and once you leave out of the church, is your prayer still there that you had while you were in church? Because you know a lot of people can pray and pray and pray and then you get out of church. Is that true? Are you still going to speak to me if I walk up to you at Piggy Wiggy or wherever? So you know, it's not only your prayer, it's your acting with your prayer. Because you can pray here and get out there and just go the whole other direction. So you want to pull the people together, you're going to have to pull yourself together and know that when you leave out of the church, don't be afraid to speak. Do not be afraid to speak because people out there need the people in the church to speak to them. If you understand what I'm saying. As leaders, we do need to speak to them. I'm not a leader in anything. But I do know the ground that I stand on, and I stand because my people are not being treated right. You stay in church, you get dressed up, you come in here, but then when you see these people out there just because they did this last night or did that the night before, or you saw them because you don't feel that you got the right to speak to them. Those people on the street stick together more than the people in the church. 
Those people on the street get together more than the people in the church. But see, when you get when you get in the things of the Lord, when you get in the Lord and really get in there and sincere about it, you won't be acting like that. And then when you come to church, you'll just be using what God has given you all during the week. And when I see you, when during the week, you know, they are the same thing wherever they see you are. If you really got it together with the Lord. That's the truth, but not a lot of people got it together with them. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> I ain't going to mess with that one. But <laughs> I'm saying that when you really, just like the closer you get to God, the more you see your own body. You know, but when you just kind of coming in it all, and you're not in the church, and you may say, you know, you find fault with them on church folks. They go to church and they do this and do that. But, but when you get close to God, I mean, you know, when you, you really get I'm going to just win. Then you see some stuff about your own church. Amen. That's true. That's true. I didn't know, I didn't know that until I started reading the Bible, but you're telling the truth. Uh -huh. But yeah. you see, and what I'm saying is in order to get the people to come to church, church people have to act like church people. You can't be different outside. Well, and, 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 and expect because... Like I tell the people that I talk to outside, they say, I'm not going to go to church because they put me down in church. Church people, you can't deny the church if you don't go. You can't accuse the church if you don't go. You can't say, I don't, I don't uh, read, not speak the right in the Bible if you haven't read. And there's a difference in a Christian and a church person. Yeah, you church understand people, what I'm saying? Anybody can just come to church. But when you have a relationship with Christ, and you um, hold yourself and act Christ like, that's what makes you a Christian. You know, you're going to carry yourself in a way that you're going to, that God will be glorified. Anybody who comes into the church can be a church person. They just come and sit and keep the bench warm. But if they don't have that relationship with God, they're just leaving the same way that they came. So there's a difference between a Christian and a church person. Amen. So do we know the difference? And that's not for us. To that's not for us. That's, that's the relationship with Christ. You know, I can't determine if you're a Christian, but I might question your actions. You know, but I still don't have a right to judge you. The reality of it is, we we as uh, we as Christians, we as those who have professed Jesus as Lord and Savior of our lives, we. We may see others who are not doing the things that we know that they ought to do, but because they are not doing what they are supposed to do, does not prevent us from doing what we are supposed to do and being who we are supposed to be. Because as you said, people are watching us. People are watching the church. And when you say the church, what you do is talking collectively, but they are also watching us individually. So... We have to be, uh, and, and I'm going to just go ahead and say, if, if, uh, if Deacon Ritz sees me and I'm not living the life that I claim to live, then he's not responsible for my life, but he's got to continue to live the life. Now, as a Christian brother, now, he has a right, and I, he should, to say, you know you're not doing what you're supposed to do. And, you know, so unfortunately sometimes when we as Christians, we approach others who are not living the life, they sometimes, they'll get belligerent with us, but still, we can't control that. We have done what we have supposed to do. So the important thing is that we have to live according to the life that we profess. And to one other thing, even if we approach someone that's doing, if uh, if Yvonne was, I saw her and she wasn't I doing what I thought she ought to act the way I thought she ought to act. That's the way I'm supposed to approach her. Yeah. Right. I don't just go up to a daughter, you know. There's a way that as you're a child of God, then you think of the mercy the Lord has had with you. And you and you don't go up to them. And, you see, sometimes a lot of people in the church don't seem to know how to act. When it comes to talking to certain people, to other people, you've got to, you know, 
you can't approach him with that superiority attitude. Amen. You got to come low and humble. You got to get on their level. You got to talk to them. And, and you know, you treat them just like God treats you. Because, you know, every saint got a past. Right. Every sinner got a future. So you treat them the way that you want to be treated. And you know how God did you. God could have done a lot of things to you, but look how God did. He kept you. And, and, and looked after you, provided for you. Even when you was his enemy. He did these things for you while you were yet sinners. So when you see somebody else, you think about how you were treated. And you treat that person like that. Who's to say if that person won't be the next leader? So that, those are some of the things that we have to be thinking about. But God has told us if we don't do the things he tells us, there's a penalty. And he's saying, you know, you can't avoid this the, uh, this unnecessary, this unnecessary penalty. Because all you got to do is do what you're supposed to be doing. Amen. And he said that if my people were called by my name, you're going to be called by his name, then you gotta humble yourself. You gotta pray. You gotta seek his faith. And you gotta turn from his wicked ways. Amen. And he said, and then will I be <laughs> After you've done those things I told you, then I'm gonna hear from him. But if you don't do them, then you know, you don't. It's, that's right. Brother Pender used to say it won't work, Joe. So are there any other comments? Yeah, I would just like to say that um, once we understand that it's about me and him and not me and them, mm -hmm. we, we'll make it. Um, you know, I think you said some key that um, is how we approach folk. Uh -huh. And see, some folk approach folk that come with a lot of baggage and they may have changed, but people know that and see that. Mm -hmm. But you got to put that behind you. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about what they did. Just keep on doing what you do and do the right thing. But I think that's what bothers a lot of folks. They say, well, they can't tell me nothing because they have done this, they have mm -hmm. done that. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about that. Mm -hmm. right. it, it ain't about you and them. It's about you and him. So just keep that focus and just do what you got to do and try to be a beacon for someone else when you go out and talk to them. And it's not only outside of the church. I've been in a many churches mm -hmm. and folk don't speak to you. So it ain't outside the church. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it ain't nothing wrong with speaking to folk. You ain't got to like me or love me. Speak to me. I try to speak to everybody. I, I, I used to like on the job. I don't understand how a supervisor come in every day. The first thing I would do is go around and speak to my people. I, I was not raised. People walk by and manage to try to make them speak. I wasn't raised like that. I don't know where these folks were raised at. I speak to people. I speak to you two or three times a day. I just can't walk by people not speak to people. I don't understand it. You know, so, you know, like I said, same you. Understand it's about you and him and not them. And you'll get past a lot of stuff. We, we all got some growing to do. We had to get past that point, but that's the main thing for me. Amen. That was worth for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. But see, you realize that you are here because of God. Amen. That's why you are still here. You are blessed because of him. Mm -hmm. The other person didn't bless you, so don't let it worry you. <coughs> because no matter what you do, some folks ain't going to like anything. Mm -hmm. They say sometimes people say, you know, I don't know what it is about so and so, but I just don't like them. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't know why you don't like them, why you don't like them. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just saying that uh, you got to remember who you're working for. You got to remember who's holding this whole universe together. That's right. You know, remember who made us. That's right. Who made all of us. So the thing of it is. Whenever things seem like, you know, not making sense and all this kind of stuff, just say, you know, I'm God's child doing God's work. Amen. And, and one last thing. Uh -huh. I always say, if you can't be true to yourself, you can't be the true to others. So yeah. it starts with yeah. you. Yeah. I think sometimes other than <laughs> people don't realize they're not true. <laughs> <laughs> but they don't, I think, mm -hmm. sometimes. Oh, yeah. Sometimes you can be so wrong and so blinded that you think what you're doing is right. Mm -hmm. And some people think right and wrong and wrong is right. Mm -hmm. that's right. And that's what we've gotten to that point now. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's so dangerous. Mm -hmm. 
because they think they're right. And you know, somebody been telling me they think. And then sometimes people that's taught they know a little more than you, they think they above you. But God said everything I made was good and very good. So He loved us all the same. He ain't got no respect for person. So I don't understand why we can get up here and think I'm better than you. Because I'm not no better than you, and you are not no better than I am. So the sooner we get this kind of stuff out of our mind and realize we ain't no better than the next person, move on and stop thinking you high mighty and you're not. Well, if you are uh, God's child, you won't even think like that. <laughs> the children of God don't even think like that. Look how uh, uh, John the Baptist said he won't even worthy that his young lad should cry sheep. And as good as he was. So, you know, if you're really into Christ, you don't even think that way. You think of yourself as the least. Are there any other comments? Thank you for that wonderful lesson. Thank you. I did. Thank you, Ted. Thank you, Max. Again, forgive me. But again, we want to thank you, our first Hebrew. And I will say this to the church. I'm not going to, I'm not going to read it, but. This right here will help all your your questions and, and way you feel about things. It, it will do as the key verse said, everything will be all right. Amen. At, at Amen. This, yeah, at this time, uh, we have someone to uh, respond. Can the parents? We've got to do some housekeeping. We've got country coming. Is that country? Amen. Amen. Um, at this time, we have our reader from the secretary. Minister the Anderson um, Chapter Missionary Baptist Church and St. Stephen's um, Sunday Church School. The first day of January in the year of our Lord, 2023. The school will call to order by Deacon May at 10. Opening hymn of the Lord is glad to be in the service one more time. Prayer by Deacon Reed. Scripture for today comes from 2 Chronicles 7, 12 through 22. The subject of the lesson, Promises and Consequences. The main thought, 2 Chronicles 7, 14. Two teachers, grand total attendance, um, 26 and house 17 online, a total of 43. Total offer was $56. The weather is warm. The lesson was reviewed for 44 minutes by Trustee Wooden. Closing remarks were made by a representative of the class, and all your officers remain the same. Amen. If not, we're going to receive a minute as given. Again, we want to thank each and every one in the house, thank you that online. At this time, we're going to ask us all to stand and we will close out. We're going to close out with the word Amen. Amen. Again, thank each and every one. Good morning, good morning. Happy New Year to everyone.
you here. I'm oh, sorry, bro. Right? Just doing my job for my being here. Uh, happy New Year to everybody. Thank God for allowing us to uh, see another 12 months. Mm -hmm. uh, we're the we're the proud of taking me and I do the same for you. Amen. Amen. I thank the Lord for being here. I thank you for bringing on to us another year because he didn't have to. But you know, as I wrote, I just tell him thank you because I realized it could have been all the way. And I just ask y'all continue praying for me. God, do the best that God will have me to do. And I'll pray for you the best I know. Thank you. Amen. I'm going to give you a little bit. I thank the Lord for my being here today. Um, I have two brothers that like not have been here to see this new year. One one of my brothers was attacked on December the 23rd, the 24th, December 24th. He got stabbed five times. And on December 25th, on Christmas Day, my other brother got attacked. He didn't get stabbed. He almost did. But he didn't get stabbed. Thank God for that. So my brother that got stabbed on the 24th, he got stabbed by my nephew. My brother that almost got stabbed on the 25th, it was his son. So my brother, he, came, he was able to come home yesterday from the hospital with 68 staples in his body. In and on his body. Thank <laughs> you. 
We keep the spirit of the Lord. For God has blessed us and brought us this far. And he will take us all the way. Because he did not bring us this far just to leave us. He will not abandon us. The question is, will we abandon him? Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to give way uh, for the welcome. And uh, I believe I have a technical issue that uh, uh, requires my attention. And then all of you say welcome. Uh, Minister Howell will open the service. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Glad to see each of you on this morning. You're looking well. And I know we hope and pray that the year will have us in the same place we are today or more um, filled with the uh, glory of the Lord. Amen. First, give an honor to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to uh, Pastor Lewis, to First Lady Lewis, to Minister Howard. And to our mothers, to our deacons, and all of you saints and friends, I stand before you this morning to welcome you to Anderson Chapel Missionary Baptist Church. Amen. To our um, members here on the day, we hope that you will um, find find a way. Or uh, I hope that um, when we had our, when our when our guests came, that you all greeted them with a smile. We want to start the year out with a smile. Amen. Welcome, welcoming them here so that they will continue to come. Amen. Giving them a reason to continue to come. Amen. And to our guests on today, we want to thank you because as Pastor Lewis said, you just don't uh, happen to come here to Addison Chapel. It has to be on your mind Amen. and everything to uh, come here to uh, worship with us. Amen. And we want to thank you for coming. And if there's anything we can do for you while you're here with us, if um, the ushers aren't close enough to you, if the men are close enough to you, that would be uh, glad to uh, help you with whatever you in need of. So we want to thank each and every one of you for coming and sharing with us on today. Because God is good. Amen. Amen. what he say, but I want to speak of God and speak on him and what he has done. Mm. God. I always get so emotional because he has been good. Yeah. But I do have something that hit on my heart. Mm. But I will not share it with you today, but I just ask that you continue to pray for me yes. and my family. And I would do the same for you. Thank you so I ask that uh, our visitor, visitors on today, we want you to come back and share with us because I know that Pastor Lewis will have a word for you on today from the Lord. Yeah. He is a pastor that loves the Lord, and I know that he will give you a word to yeah. make you want to come back. So again, we welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you. Yeah. Amen. 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 I was glad when they said it to me. Let us go into the house of the Lord. We're going to ask the choir to give us our open installation. Peace out. 
giving honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus. It is so good yes, to be able to be in the number one more time Amen. in a whole brand new year. Yeah. You know, um, I didn't know when I came to church today. They're going to tell me to get up here and read this scripture. <laughs> but thank God, he got a whole book yeah, of yeah. nothing but his word. Yeah, yeah. Now, I'm going to read one. <laughs> and it's one that you need to know. Because these are the thoughts that we need to take with us into this new year. It never grows old. And if you don't know it by heart, you need to learn it. Because it's so comforting. It's so healing. It's, it just gives you relief. So I want you to think about each of these words. And it's coming from God's book of Psalms. And it's Psalm 23. Amen. Listen. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thou rod and thou staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. Yes. And my cup, my yes. cup, my yes. cup running over. Yes. Surely goodness yes. and mercy yes. shall follow me oh. all the days, yes. all the days of my yes. life. Yes. And I will dwell yes. in the house yes. of the Lord yes. forever. Yes. Amen. Yes. Good morning, teacher. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to be here. Right. It's yeah. to pray this morning. Right. Let us bow our heads this morning. Our Father, which I'm in heaven, yeah. I will be thy name. Yeah. Father, the few of your servants have gathered here this morning. Yeah. Oh, Father, we are so much to thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you. But let us come to John and serve with you today. Yeah. Father, we just thank you this morning for another thank you, year. Father, yeah. 2023 was a promise to us. Yeah. Father, you saw fit to let us see another yeah. year. Yeah. Father, we just say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. Yes, 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 How you Lord. look upon each and every one of us. Yes, Lord. Oh, Father, you just didn't pick one. Oh, Father, you looked over the, the whole entire universe. Yes. Yes. Oh, Father, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank Father, bless the pastor here this morning. Yes. And the ones that you have called on to be yes, yes. yes. That someone may hear the word that they say. Yes. Father, we know this is a new year. Yes. Yes. Some have made new revelations. Yes. 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 But Father, we know that you are one in all. Thank you, God. Oh, Father, the revolution that I will make is to get closer yes, to you. Yes, because yes, tomorrow yes. is our promise to you. Yes. Yes. Of us today. But Father, we just say thank you this morning. Thank you. Don't let us forget about the sick and shut in this morning. The ones that are in the hospital this morning. The yes. ones that are sick in the rest home. Yes. Oh, Father, the ones that are at home this morning. Yes. Oh, Father, they don't even know what is wrong. Yes. But Father, we know that you're a doctor this morning. Yes. No matter where they are, this morning, you can go there and heal that body. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, Father, we guide the doctor this morning yes. and to operate this morning. Yes. Oh, Father, we just thank you this morning. Thank you. Oh, Father, we thank you for letting us travel up and down the Jacob house. Thank you. We bring us to our destination, bring us back home one more time. Yes. Or someone can make it 
Oh Father, we just say thank you this morning. Oh Father, we thank you for your how you been treat how we've been treating each and every one of us this morning. Oh Father, we need you to think about each and other, each and one of us this morning. But not by ourselves, not by our clothes family. Oh Father, we need you to think about the whole entire universe. We need prayer, Father. We need prayer to go among all. Oh Father, pray for our leaders this morning and they continue on. They need prayer this morning. So much is going on in this yes, world today Lord. that we need to reach out and just gather yes. together and pray the prayer so we can reach out to us and guide them. Oh, Father, we thank you this morning. In Jesus' name, I do pray. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. From the bottom. Place. 
we will as soon as possible unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. Amen. 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 And let us be reminded here that we are to be slow to take offense, but always ready for the consideration. Amen. 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 At this point in time, it's not indicated on the program, but this is the first Sunday of the year, and usually on the first Sunday of the year, we do we do take time to offer a prayer for our church leaders, our deacons, our trustees, our mothers, and uh, those leaders of the various ministries. So we ask this morning, if you are serving Anderson Chapel in the capacity of deacon, if you're serving Anderson Chapel in the capacity of trustee, as mother, as uh, chairman or president of an uh, ministry, we ask that you will assemble around this altar as we shall usher in the new year with the standing of prayer. So please, please ma'am, please sir, please gather around at the altar. Amen. Brother Wednesday, if you have some soft music you can play, please. challenge and it's all right now. But Father, we acknowledge, dear Lord, that they cannot do it without you right now. Father, and as we come into this year of 2023, dear Lord, Father God, we cannot do anything about the failures of last year, dear Lord. Father God, we can we can revel in the successes of last year, but even at that, dear Lord, the successes of last year will not bring us through 2023. Father God, if we do not, dear Lord, hold fast to your hand. So, Father, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, dear Lord, Father God, I pray, dear Lord, thou special anointing upon these, your men and women. Father God, dear Lord, that's the, those who may come to them, dear Lord. Mm -hmm. Father, that they will share with them the wisdom, dear Lord. Father God, that they would share with them the word of God. Father God, that they would share with them, dear Lord, the hope of the future, dear Lord. Father God, that they would not, dear Lord, Father God, run them down. But Father God, they will pick them up and build them up. For we all have fallen and fallen short of the glory of God. But Father, we thank you, dear Lord, for another day. So Lord, right now, dear Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, dear Lord, touch, dear Lord, the deacons, dear Lord, the trustees, the mothers, the, the missionaries, the presidents, the chairmen, dear Lord, Father, and these teachers, everyone, dear Lord, Father God, that 2023 will be the year that Anderson Chapel will rise again, dear Lord, to the calling that you have called us to. Father God, that we wouldn't judge not that we shall not be just. But Father God, that we just may declare boldly the word of God. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. 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 
trustees and us use the services in your home. We have our offering and the offering lunch and the food call. Just when I need them 
Well, all right, I we were wrong. We actually yes. written that, Father God, for your forgiveness. Yes, yes Lord. Lord. <laughs> right because, Father God, you, that you forgive us. That is your, your forgiveness. Yes, yes Lord. Lord. That's what we ask. Yes. Father God, in 2023, mm-hmm. we ask for a closer walk. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We want a relationship with you, Father. Yes, Lord. A relationship that won't separate us from God. Yes. Not just for ourselves, my mm-hmm. Lord. We want for our friends, yes. Yes. our family. Yes, Lord. And I'm so happy that one because I, one of my granddaughter called a girl that one sent me a video how she will pray. Well, the little children have to pray. My Amen. Lord. I know what to pray for. Yeah. My Lord. So she wanted to know Papa knew. It's six forty five at one. She was praying. Yeah. Oh my God! I had joy in my heart right there. Amen. So I actually feel good about it. So I'm saying this one. There's so much sickness. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, it is. Hives. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, our young people are going through mental illness mm-hmm. that we can't even see. Yes, Lord. Our social media is uh, filling their head with crazy things. But Father God, you see and you hear it all. Yes, yes. Touch our young people that want to Oh, Father God, I just thank you for it. Look at the young people that I see it that want it. Well, they tell me right there, you're a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. Already this year. Yeah. Yeah. We pray, Father God, that the Spirit will come to you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They didn't grow strong. They didn't go to the altar, Father God. They didn't have to go. You, you know what that yeah. <coughs> We pray your Spirit will come to you. Oh, Father God, we pray your Spirit upon our first lady, our mm-hmm. first mother, what she was going to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We know, Father God, that there's nothing that you can't fit, there's nothing that yeah. you can't give. Yeah. That yeah. She already answered, Father God, yeah. for forgiveness. She, yeah. she already answered, Father God, to touch her family, Father yeah. God. Not yeah. Yeah. And I believe you got to do that this morning. Yeah. Touch me, Father. Touch each and every one of the family this morning. Yeah. Though they're they saying that they're wrong. But they still may be sick in the body. They still may have mental issues. They still may have financial problems. They still may be going through different sickness. You, I don't know, but you know. Yes, you know. Yes. 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 I believe what you always say. If my people yes. they are called by my name, we are his people. Mm-hmm. And we are called by his name. Yeah. And, and we are on ourselves. There is power in our prayer. Yeah. Yeah. We can change things. Yeah. You don't have to yell at the top of your wall. But if we will come together yeah. and pray together. Yeah. And on ourselves. We won't need the government My Lord. until we lay down the gun. My Lord. We have the power in our practice. To change these things. Yeah. We don't need social service. I heard David say, I'm old, I, mean, I was young, but yet they were old. Uh, uh, David didn't say he had the welfare to take care of. Well, we serve a God that has a power on a thousand years. Thank you. 
In the name of whatever the problem, in the name of Jesus. Where you're hurting, just touch it in the name of Jesus. I believe you, my Lord, this is a good time. So, Father God, we bring all these petitions for you this morning. And we believe it at the heart. Those days, if you can't call by name, you know what we stand in need. Yes, yes. Lord. So, we are living at the heart. We live in bliss. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I am. Amen. 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 Oh, God, pray. 
man. I came to tell you what Jesus said. Give up your sins and be baptized. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you, my Father, children. What a joy and privilege it is to be in the house of the Lord. One more time. Okay. For God has been good to this little boy. You can give your own testimony. God has been good. Woke me this morning and started in 2022. 2023 is now here. You know, I think back to the year of 2020 when I had prostate surgery and I, the Lord brought us through. And here I am, still standing. Amen. And God deserves all the glory and praise. For uh, we owe God a praise. We owe the world a praise. Because he's been good to me. We invite that you would turn with us to the book of John this morning, the Gospel of John, and it was chapter 12, the Gospel of John, chapter 12, as you are finding that passage of scripture, John, chapter 12, and we are going to begin reading. Oh, I'm going to give you a minute. I'll give you a minute. Thank you. I'm actually giving you the scripture so you can turn to it while I continue with uh, a couple of house cleaning issues. So that way you'll be ready. Chapter John, uh, John chapter 12, and we shall begin reading and with at the 40th. Oh, I got We're going to begin reading it. At the 42nd verse. Amen. Amen. Uh, Maria, Lois, one of you, wake that young man up. He needs to sleep at night. He does it here in church. He does it at school. This is what happens when you don't get enough sleep at night. Amen. 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 2023. Let's start off. Let's 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 let's, let's do it. Let's do it right. Amen. Let's Amen. do it right. You know, there was something we used to think uh, our parents they used to tell us, uh, you know, early to bed and early to rise. Uh, rise. And they used to tell us makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. You know, if we did nothing else. It, at least kept us awake during the daytime. Amen. 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 So we're thanking God for His grace and mercy. It's good to see all our young people here this morning. And new here, I know many of them may be traveling in and they just uh, schools out and they are celebrating with their uh, parents, grandparents, and whomever. But we thank God for you being in the house this morning. We Amen. thank God for all of our members and those Amen. of that are listening to the uh, mass media. We thank God for you. The John chapter 12. John chapter 12 and 42nd verse. The 42nd verse reads, Nevertheless, among the sheep rulers, also many believed on him. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him. Least they shall be put out of the synagogue. For they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. And Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. And he that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. I am come a light into the world, that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. And if any man hear my voice and believe not, 
I just am not. Oh, I came not to just the world, but to save the world. He that rejected me, excuse me, he that rejected me and receiveth not my word, has one that judges him. The words that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father was sent. He gave me a command that I should say, and what I shall speak. And I know his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father saith unto me, so I speak. Pray for us. Gracious Father, we come at this time to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for another day that you have blessed us with and another opportunity that you have allowed us to come into the house of worship. Father, we ask that I will send you and preach it, dear Lord, the Holy Spirit, that it may use me, dear Lord, to preach your word, dear Lord. Use my mind as your storehouse of your wisdom. Let that same spirit abide with these your children, that someone may profess Jesus as Lord of their life. This we do pray and we say thank you. In thank Jesus you, Lord. Name. Amen. 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 Verse 42 and verse 47 is where we want to kind of focus upon. Verse 42 says, Nevertheless, among the chief rulers, also many believed on him. But because of the Pharisees, they did not convert <coughs> him. Least they should be put out of the synagogue. Verse 47 says, If any man hear my word, and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. And we want to talk to you this morning, as the Lord will allow. Watch out for the clicks, because they could cause you to lose salvation. Amen. Watch out for the clicks because they can cause you to lose salvation. Right. Preacher, sure what you're talking about, where are we going this morning? Mm -hmm. This is a new year. Amen. 2023. Mm -hmm. Last year is past. Amen. I don't care how hard I try, I can't go back and change anything Amen. that happened on last year. Now, I got to admit to you, I'm going to pay for some things that happened last year. Amen. I'm going to pay fairly for some things that happened last year. Amen. Prime example, the other, day, the other morning as I was preparing to come to work, I was at the sink taking care of my medicine routine. I heard some water flowing. I heard that water. But I just left out of the bedroom and they was talking about green. So they can lay in my mind, I had already surmised that it was raining. I looked outside and there was water on the cardboard. So it was raining. Deacon Branch, I got in the vehicle, I went to work. My wife sent me a text. They called me when you can. She informed me in short order that a water line had busted. Water was shooting 10 feet in the air. I can't go back and change that what happened last year. Man, but in a few months when that water bill comes, <laughs> I'm going to pay for what happened. Amen. There are things that we have done in our lives that we can't change, but we're going to pay for it. Amen. But I thank God that I don't have to pay the total price because the sin that I've done in my life 
when I accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, he paid them all. Amen. I want to tell you right now, just because you have been in the church for 30, 40, 50, 75 years, you don't have the exclusive right to salvation. Because those same ones that you are talking about right now, those same ones that you are saying that will be lost because of their sins, of the things that they are doing, I need to remind you right now that someone saved the same about you. See, because what they are doing, although they may have Facebook, Instagram, and all the other social platforms that they posted on, there's nothing new, nothing different than what you've done. Amen. But it was just kept quiet. People right. whispered about it. Amen. There was just some things that as our four four parents used to say, we don't talk about that. All right, man. But it was known. Yeah. Uh-huh. But the same God that offers salvation to you. It's the same God that's offering salvation to them. Amen. Jesus said, judge not that you be not judged. So, here he says, if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. Amen. When you meet me, out at Walmart. Yes. When you meet me in the grocery store, when you meet me in the mall, when you meet me even in the church and you share the word of God with me and I hear not, don't judge me. All right, man. Just come. Just keep praying for it. Amen. Keep sharing the word. Yes. Keep that I may be saved for we have all sinned and sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But Jesus died on the cross. For God so loved the world that whosoever shall believe in him shall not but have life everlasting. Amen. Now some of you think I may have missed something in the verse that just now but Mother Dupree she, she said for God so loved the world that whosoever Believe it to him. Shall not perish. But have life everlasting. And I'm so glad that I fall into that. Whosoever. I'm so glad that my my wife falls into that. Whosoever. I'm so glad that my children fall into that. Whosoever. I'm so glad that my grandchildren. I'm so glad that this church body falls into that. Whosoever. Because we can be saved. But there are certain, I mentioned clicks. And you see, we talk about talk about clicks. And you want to know what I'm talking about this morning? See, you have clicks in all walks of life. Amen. See, unfortunately, the first time somebody talks about clicks, we, we like to talk or think to talk about the clicks in the church. Just because I'm in the church doesn't mean I'm talking about the clicks in the church. I talk about the clicks in life, period. Amen. Yeah. The clicks in life can cause you to miss out on a lot. Yes. Yes. You know, you have clicks on the job. Yes. Amen. Sometimes you go on the job, and sometimes, even in school, uh, when you transfer to a new school and you are you are new on the block, there are those that look at you differently, and there are those who call themselves they are they are the ringleader, uh-huh. and they tell people that they don't like you. Mm-hmm. And because they don't like you, you're not supposed to like them. Amen. This is a click. Mm-hmm. In New Age fashion, we kind of call it a gang a little bit. Yeah, right now. But these clicks, there was there was a click that was working here with Jesus. This click was called the Pharisees. Yeah, right now. The Pharisees was the leader of this clique. Uh-huh. And look at verse 42 here. Even in the midst of all that Jesus has done, yeah. 
his miracle, his healing, his blessing, all that he had done. There was those, verse 42, that said that of the sheep rulers, also many believed mm -hmm. on him. Yeah. But because of the Pharisees, mm -hmm. they did not confess him. Least they should be put out of the synagogue. Notice here. What does the word say? The word says that if thou shalt believe in thy heart and confess with thy mouth, thou shalt be saved. They believed, but because of fear of the Pharisees, fear of the clique that they were seeing. They was losing out on their salvation. Mm -hmm. Because watch this. The devil's in hell with me. But he won't say. Not going to confess. So we have to put all the actions together. We got to believe in our heart. Yes. And confess with our mouth. But don't be afraid of those that are around. See these same, these same Pharisees. Think back to you, to the young man that was born blind for birth. Mm -hmm. This young man, Jesus, came by and restored his sight. Gave him sight. And the Pharisees heard of it. And they called his parents in and asked him, oh, is this your son? They said, yes, this is my son. How is it that he sees now? They was fearful because of this same click group that if they professed that Jesus did it, that he was the son of God, that they would be put out of the synagogue. They, they fell back to the old safety net. They say, uh, yes, he's our son. He's of age. Ask him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He can speak for himself. All right, and I want to tell you young people right now, there's coming a time in your life where right now you're living in your mother, your father, your grandparents, whoever home, and they are taking care of you, they are providing for you. But there's coming a time where you're going to have to speak for yourself. You're going to have to pray for yourself. You're going to have to fight for yourself. You're going to have to pray for yourself. Or oh, they may be praying over there where they are, but you're going to need how to learn how to pray for yourself. You need to speak for yourself. They call the young man in. How is it that you see? We have heard of this man Jesus. We know that he's a sinner. Why don't you just tell us right now that, that he's a sinner? The young man says, whether he be a sinner or not, this one thing I know, whereas I once was blind, now I see. Church of the living God, all you got to do is just speak the truth. Tell the story of what God has done for you. Church, he's picked me up out of the mock and mockery place. He's placed me on the solid rock to stand. Church of the living God. And I can't be afraid of what the clicks may do, what the clicks may say. I've got to believe in God. Why? Because he comes to save me. Amen. Amen. God sent his son. And the son gave his life. Yes, he did. And he died on the cross for my sins and your sins. He stayed there in that cross for three days. Three nights and three days and three nights. But he rose again on Sunday morning. He got up with all power in his hand. And because he got up, we can face tomorrow. Church of a living God, I'm so glad. Why well, didn't come this morning with a sermon for you this morning of a resolution for 2023? Why well, didn't I bring a resolution for 2023? Because I want to tell you right now, it's another day that the Lord has kept me. And I'm so glad about it. See, God's mercy are renewed daily. Church of a living God. I know that we not, we marked another Count of the year, but God has blessed me with one more day, one more shiny day, and I'm so glad about it. He woke me this morning and started me on my way. He clothed me in my right mind, put food on my table, clothes on my back, a roof over my head, surrounded me with love of my family. But most of all, He gave His only begotten Son, Jesus, to die on the cross of my I said, and because of that, I'm so glad. Amen. 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 Amen.
Thank you. I'm not worried about the praise of men. I want to praise of God. Amen. I want to hear him say, well done. Not good and faithful, sir. See, one thing, see, with man, when they give you a praise, they may build you up today uh -huh. and throw you down from home. Look around all society. You even look at the athletes. They talk about how wonderful this athlete is. But church of a living God, if he missed that last second field, field goal, they are calling out for a bomb threat. They want to commit murder on him. If he missed that last minute free throw that could have won the game, they say that he's just a bomb, a bomb. Church of a living God, they'll talk about you in the church. If you sing good, they'll talk about how well you sound. If you preach good, they'll talk about how well you preach, but if you preach on something that they don't like, they'll say that he did not preach a good sermon that day. One day you're up and one day you're down. But I'm so glad that when Jesus said, well done, thou good and faithful servant, you have been faithful over a few days, and are now into the kingdom that's prepared for the righteous church of a living God. I want to see Jesus for myself. Yes. Mother yes. is gone. Yes. Father is gone. Yes. Grandmother is gone. Yes. Grandfather is gone. Yes. I want to see them, but that's not what matters with me. Most of all, I want to see Jesus, yes. the man who died on Calvary's yes. cross for my sins. Thank you, Thank you. Don't let the cliffs cause yes. you to miss salvation. Yes. Cause you to lose your Thank salvation. You. You. Don't be afraid of those around you. Mm -hmm. For it's not for praise of men, but it's for the praise of God. Thank In 2023, you. let us purpose him today Thank you. to be better than we were last year. Amen. That's all we got to do. Just purpose to be better than last year. Amen. When people come up and they talk about you, before you respond, ask yourself this question. What benefit do I get out of responding to their requests? Will I edify God in my response? Or will I show them just what they thought about me is true? Take time to think. As we read in the church coming. To be slow to anger, but always ready for reconciliation. Why? Because this is what God did. He said, His only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believe him shall not perish, but have an everlasting life. Verse 50 of that 12th chapter says, And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. And church of the living God, I challenge every one of you, every one of you, to live the life that God will be pleased with. Amen. Amen. I know everybody in here is not saved. Jesus. Everybody in here doesn't profess to be, some Some would say, I'm not a real Christian. Mm -hmm. So we put we put labels. We, we like to talk about just like, we, we talk about sin. There's a little sin and there's a big sin. Let me tell you something, sin is sin. sin. Yeah. A little sin and get you to hell just as quickly yeah. yeah. as yeah. 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 Amen. Yeah. See, because the reality of it is, it's not sin that sends you to hell. The word of God says, Jesus said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So if you want to make it in, we've got to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. See, because every one of us, every one of us, from the pulpit to the choir to the back door, we have all sinned and fallen short. But one thing that we have done, we have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. So for this day forward, let us purpose in our heart to share the gospel, the good news. Whatever we speak, let it therefore be what the Father has said unto us. And if we don't know what the Father has said, there's 66 books Amen. that can help us along the way. Amen.
We pray that this message has been a blessing to you today. Amen. Amen. As we move forward through 2023. Thank you, God. New year, a new opportunity. All right. Let this new opportunity draw us closer to the Lord. Amen. Because I want to tell you one thing for sure. Every day that we live, we are one day closer to God. Amen. So the question is, will you be ready? Be ready. When Jesus comes, come on, why give us a blessing with Jesus?
his help to secure. As we have come at this time before this table that is prepared, Jesus said that as often as we do this, we do show forth his death and his suffering, he will come again. Paul took the time to encourage the church at Corinth because of their misuse and abuse of this time of communion. Minister Howard is going to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 11 just what Paul shared with the church at Corinth. For there must be heresies among you, that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. When you come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, everyone take it before, uh, before other his own supper, and one is hungry, and another is drunken. What? Have ye not houses to eat and to drink in? Or despise ye the church of God? And shame them that have not. What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. For I have received of the Lord, for which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament and my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink, drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not, should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should, be, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation. And the rest I will set in order when I come. Amen. And the rest he will set in order when he comes. As has been stated, God sent his son, and the son gave his life. Jesus endured inhuman suffering for us. Death on the cross was reserved for the most vile of offenses. But here's our Lord, my Lord and Savior, who had done nothing wrong. All he did was give sight to the blind, make the lean to walk, mute to talk. Gave sight to the blind. But yet, he was numbered with the transgressions. There, even on the cross, they placed a crown of thorns on his head. Here is the king of the Jews. This is after they had whipped him through the night with 40 lashes saved one. With the cat of nine tails, with metal spears and shells and bones roving into that strap, so that each whip was designed to cut into the skin. Think about it. Jesus said, as often as you do this, we do show forth for his death and suffering to be come to you. Yes, we talk about how he died. And we love to say he died for our sins. But he suffered. He suffered for our sins. We don't like suffering for our sins. 
We complain about the things that we have to suffer or the things we bring upon ourselves. But he suffered for our sins. There in the upper room before they took him away. He shared his last meal with his disciples. The bread and the wine. He said this bread represents my body. This wine represents my blood. The blood of the New Testament. I will no more drink of the fruit of the vine till I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. Amen. He blessed the bread and he blessed the wine. We're going to ask Deacon May to bless this bread and to bless this wine. And as he is Asking the Lord to intervene on our behalf with the bread and the wine. As you think back to what Minister Howard has read, say it's dangerous to partake of this unworthily, but it's dangerous not to partake of it. Amen. Simply stating, he said, that you ought to live every day that you are able. Mm -hmm. Because this shows the death of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus shall come again.
Jesus. 